Hello, this is Kedalytics. Welcome to today's session. Today, we continue our series on the art of interpreting and presenting analyzed data part two. In our previous series, we talked about the fact that there are three effective ways of presenting our analyzed data, which are text, tables, and graphs. Part two of this series tackles text. Now, how do we go about writing an effective text? Well, let's consider these two sentences or two lines. One, mean baseline glycated hemoglobin of 73 diabetic patients from intervention was 8.9% and mean glycated hemoglobin after intervention was 7.8%. 2. Mean glycated hemoglobin of 73 of diabetic patients decreased from 8.9% to 7.8% after an intervention. What do you notice about these two sentences? Well, in line 1, the author presents only the data, possibly exactly as it is found in the study. And so what this does is that it forces the reader to try to analyze and draw his or her own conclusions. However, what do you notice about the second line? You realize that in the second line, the data are presented together with its interpretation. And so we can say that line two is a more preferred style of writing. Now, we're going to discuss three things that we need to take note of, especially when we are texting or we are writing our text for our analyzed data. One, the fact that data, which are often numbers and figures are better presented in tables and graphs, while the interpretation are better stated in text. However, if there are too few variables to be considered, the data can be easily described in a simple sentence, including its interpretation. So, for example, you have a study among diabetic patients where you are considering the gender distribution. You could easily write, the majority of diabetic patients enrolled in the study were male, into bracket 80%, compared to female, 20%. Or you could equally right that the study observed a male preponderance compared to females, or the study observed a male preponderance, we put at 80%, knowing that gender distribution is only between male and female. So if 80% goes for male, obviously 20% goes for female. The second thing we also want to con consider is the fact that Using qualitative words to attract readers' attention is not helpful. And so such words like remarkably decreased, extremely different, and obviously higher are words that are redundant. So there's no need for us to really use these words in trying to be verbose. However, we can go with the exact values in the table or the data we have presented would actually show how these values are remarkably or extremely or obviously high or low. The last thing we also want to talk about is that we need to avoid redundant words and information. And how? what do we mean by that? We do not want to repeat the results within the table, within the text, and within the figure. We need to establish a well-structured table and graphs that are self-explanatory. And hence, we will not need to give more explanation or details in the text. However, it is important to note that only important points and results need to be highlighted in the text. This one is very important. So it is not everything that we present in the table or are seen in the chart or graph what we need to 
put into text, but only important points and results need to be highlighted in the text. I hope we find these few tips very, very educative and informative in helping us to shape how we write the interpretation of our tables, of our graphs. When you find this video useful, kindly like it, kindly subscribe and share with your friends. In our next series, which is part three of the series, we will consider how to go about presenting our tables. Until we meet again, this is Kedilitics, it's a bye.